If you already have a 5800X 3D, should you upgrade to a 7800X 3D? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on AMD's top gaming CPUs, with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D in the red corner, taking on the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D in the blue corner. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 16 games at three different resolutions, I'm also going to show you one, how to solve a nasty issue that prevented me from booting my PC into Windows, and two, an amazing tool that will automatically optimize the performance of your Zen 3 or Zen 4 CPU. These are two items that every PC user will find invaluable, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Before the battle gets started, I wanted to discuss an issue that I had while conducting the testing for this video, and more importantly, show you how I solved it. The problem was that when I switched from my Sapphire Nitro 7900 XDX, the GPU I have in my AMD test bench, to the reference AMD Radeon 7900 XDX, my system wouldn't boot into Windows. I would normally use DDU to wipe the drivers before installing a new GPU, but these are both 7900 XDX cards, so it wasn't necessary. The system would boot loop and sometimes make it all the way to Windows, only to immediately shut back down. After multiple failed boot attempts, I would get a startup menu and try to boot into safe mode, but the same behavior persisted. I would eventually boot into Windows in safe mode only for the system to shut down immediately before I even had a chance to do anything. It was incredibly frustrating. I tried pretty much everything I could think of to solve the issue. I cleared the CMOS multiple times and left the BIOS at default settings, but that didn't work. I suspected it might be a power related issue, so I unplugged the PSU, let the power drain from the system, and tried powering it back up, but that didn't fix it either. I tried putting back in the original Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900XDX, but now that wouldn't even boot, so it wasn't the GPU. Still thinking it was power related, I even tried replacing the entire PSU, which did actually allow me to boot into Windows until I switched back to the original AMD Radeon 7900XDX reference model, and then it stopped working again. At this point, I wanted to pick the entire test bench up, throw it out the window and scream, but at least I had now eliminated the PSU as the problem. I still strongly believed it was power related, so I decided to unplug the cables from the USB 2 headers on the motherboard. The first one I tried was for the Gigabyte PSU, which has a beautiful LCD window on the side that requires a USB connection. No luck at all. The next one I tried was for the EVGA CLCX AIO, which has a great LCD screen that requires a USB connection to communicate with the EVGA software. And BAM! That was it. When I tried rebooting the system, everything worked as expected. First time, straight away, no issues. I've had an issue before with using a splitter on USB 2 headers, something I highly recommend not doing, but nothing as simple as this. It's crazy how such a small issue can cause such a huge problem. PC building can be frustrating when you have an issue that's tough to diagnose, and we all immediately think the worst, but sometimes it's something much easier to solve. So my strong recommendation is, if you ever face an issue like this, try disconnecting devices from your motherboard before assuming the worst. You could save yourself a lot of time and frustration. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D in the red corner, taking on the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D in the blue corner. The test systems being used to run the benchmarks are my AMD AM5 based open bench table and my Falcon Northwest Talon AM4 based system with the following components. For the AM5 test platform, for the motherboard, board, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For the RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB DDR5 6000 at CL30. For the GPU, we have an AMD Radeon RX 7900XDX Graphics. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Power supply. For the AM4 test platform, the motherboard is an ASUS X570 ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. For the RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z Neo 64GB DDR4-3600 at CL16. For the GPU, we have an AMD Radeon RX 7900XTX graphics. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 280mm AIO. For storage, we have 2TB Samsung 980 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Seasonic Prime TX1000. Affiliate links for 
for all of these components are listed in the description below. I selected the reference AMD 7900 XDX as a GPU for these tests because it's the most compact current high-end GPU that I could find that would fit inside the relatively small Falcon Northwest Talon chassis. I conducted all testing for the 7900 XDX at RAGE settings in Adrenaline, which basically provides additional power to the car. To help replicate an open bench table test environment within the Falcon Northwest Talon, I removed the side glass to significantly improve the flow of cool air going into the system. PBO was enabled for both systems to remove the limits imposed by AMD on the CPUs, and the memory for both systems was either set to DOCP or Expo. I intentionally tested all games at ultra settings to reflect what most people who buy these gaming chips will do. I could have tested at low settings to more heavily load the CPUs, but that would generate artificial results that don't accurately reflect real world conditions, since very few people will likely buy a 7800X3D to play games at low settings. At a resolution of 1080p, both CPUs were highly loaded in all games, even at ultra settings, so that will help show the performance difference between the chips. One thing that I do want to mention when testing two CPUs from different platforms is that it's almost impossible to isolate any performance difference between the two systems to just the CPU, because the motherboard and memory will be different. So please keep that in mind when looking at benchmark results. I made two changes to the benchmark suite for this video. I replaced F1 2021 with F1 2023, which has an updated game engine and visually looks way better. I also added Avatar Frontiers of Pandora that has a fantastic built-in benchmark. The game really stresses your system, so I ran it with AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3 or FSR 3 turned on, but with frame generation turned off. With the test systems ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy. In the blue corner, we have the champion. In the red corner, we have the challenger. Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out. Have you ever read about overclocking or undervolting your CPU and thought to yourself, it all sounds too complicated and wish there was an easier way to do it? As I mentioned earlier in the video, there is an amazing tool to do just that and it's called Project Hydra by Yuri Bubli. This is the successor to the popular CTR or clock tuner for Ryzen software and is the most advanced overclocking sandbox that exists for Ryzen processors based on Zen 3 and Zen 4 architectures. This software allows you to optimize your system to meet your needs, whether it's to maximize performance by overclocking it or minimize temperatures and power by undervolting it. Importantly, most of the optimization features are fully automated, which helps to save you a lot of time and frustration. The complete list of what this tool can do is way too long to mention in this video, but some of the highlights include automatically overclock or undervolt your CPU, automatically search for the best curve optimizer values to use, automatically overclock or undervolt your GPU, automatically load and activate optimized profiles with system startup, and help adjust memory timings and evaluate performance with Membeck test. It's an awesome and 
and very powerful tool that is relatively easy to use. So you may be asking yourself, what's the catch? The catch is it's not free to download. The software requires you to be a Patreon member of Yuri, which you can do for as little as $3 per month. I've used the tool extensively and I can highly recommend it to anyone who wants to make the most of your Ryzen CPU and doesn't want to spend hours figuring out how to do it all yourself. AMD offers a free tool called Ryzen Master. However, whenever I've used the auto overclock or curve optimizer features in this tool, I've always run into stability problems, so I wouldn't recommend it. I'm in no way affiliated with this tool or stand to benefit financially. I simply think it's a great tool that gets updated regularly. So in my opinion, it's worth the cost. Check it out and let me know in the comments what you think. In this video, we pitted two top AMD gaming CPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who would emerge victorious. With the Ryzen 7 5800X3D in the red corner, taking on the Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the blue corner. As expected, the round by round results show a clear victory for the 7800X3D with 20 victories, three losses, and one draw across 24 hard fought rounds. When you look at the average performance across 15 games, the average FPS advantage for the 7800X3D is around 10% at 1080p, but drops to near zero at 4K, which basically means that the games are heavily GPU bound at 4K as expected. This would normally mean that if you are gaming at 4K, then there is no real value in upgrading your CPU. However, if you look at the 1% lows, the 7800X3D has a distinct and meaningful advantage at every resolution. And this is something that you will notice in games. When we look at power efficiency, this advantage extends further with the 7800X3D achieving its performance at significantly lower power draws, which again is not surprising given that it is a newer generation chip. What happens when we look at cost? The current price for both CPUs puts the 5800X3D approximately $80 cheaper than the 7800X3D, which is a cost advantage of around 25%. If you now convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then the 5800X3D provides a knockout blow by offering approximately 14% better bang for your buck in gaming when compared to the 7800X3D. This is significant and doesn't include the additional platform upgrade costs that you would have to incur if you decided to upgrade, such as buying a new AM5 motherboard and DDR5 memory. So given this, my strong recommendation if you are gaming at higher resolutions is to stick with the 5800X3D and upgrade when the next generation of AMD chips is released. You simply can't beat the value that the 5800X3D represents at 4K. If however you game at lower resolutions, play a lot of competitive online games, or simply want the best gaming performance you can get, then the 7800X3D is an easy recommendation to make. The platform upgrade costs are higher, but you will have future upgrade paths, so that should help offset some of the costs. The bottom line is that both CPUs really are great chips that offer an amazing gaming experience, so you win regardless of the choice that you make. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.